What's up, Dustin Wynn? What's up? I'll see you tomorrow, Dustin. Hey, guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, hi from Toronto. Hello, hello. Service Dog Chase, what's up, brother? Canine Police, what's going on? So we'll give another minute, and then uh, we're going to jump into this bad boy. Yeah. You know, you, you guys should feel fortunate. Amanda... <laughs> Amanda, you know, cut off uh, not doing Jimmy Fallon to be here tonight with us. <laughs> Jesse Cortez, what's up, brother? Uh, hi from Maryland. Hello, hello. Where are you going? Yeah, so, so Amanda was able to choose between doing Jimmy Fallon, Conan O'Brien, or Nick White Instagram Live, and she's here tonight. Yeah, Nick <laughs> White Instagram. What's up? <laughs> uh, all right, so we're going to, uh, before we kind of get started, uh, give us a little backstory. How long have you had Minion? When did you get Minion? What made you decide to get Minion? All of that. All of that. Give us the quick background. Okay. Um, ow. <laughs> <laughs> this is my life guys um so i've been training for quite a while i normally have high drive dogs which are super cool and fun but i wanted something that i could just like chill out with and have a good time with and trust that my kids would enjoy them and that kind of thing so we decided uh we were going to get a companion type dog for demos and just a fun family pet and I had a good friend of mine um, who was breeding shorty bulls, and she had some phenomenal little dogs. Um, <laughs> and they kind of blew my mind, actually. I looked at them, and I was like, this isn't going to do anything. Um, but I had a lot of respect for her, and she came out with her dogs regularly, and, and I just really enjoyed them. And so she was getting out of breeding, and I was like, I got to have one of your puppies. And I got this little tiny runt puppy. Um, who was just a little dink. I mean, he was so small, I could fit him in my, my like, hoodie pocket. <laughs> and, um, I mean, it's just been fun ever since. And that was about three years ago now, so. So Minion's going on three, and you got him at eight weeks, correct? Yeah, so he's actually, I, what, a little over three? Yeah, November. He, yeah, he, he was born November, so he just turned three. Yeah, I think as I described him, actually, as we were filming Shorty Bulls as their Pretty much like pocket-sized working dogs. <laughs> Pretty much, but like he, they don't have to work. Like they're not going to be all spun up. Like a know, mal. Like, yeah, like a Malinois will. Um, they're not like super disruptive. I mean, he's been a joy to raise. Um, I mean, he's he's just a lot of fun. I don't have to worry about him like killing somebody or anything <laughs> if he doesn't get worked or eating through my walls or you yeah. know, my couch or whatever. So They're happy um, being on and happy being off. Exactly. <laughs> so that's So there's the backstory. Now before oh uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, more shorty uh, bulls. Talk us a little bit before we actually get to the run. What was the issue that Minion had like a month prior to your appearance on America's Top Dog? So he um we were out riding four wheelers like we normally would. Um, and about two days later, he was like completely paralyzed. Um, we checked him over left and right. Couldn't find a bug bite. Couldn't find nothing. Didn't see the tick. We just rushed him to the emergency. Um, Cause obviously that's pretty extreme. And they searched him over still couldn't find anything. It wasn't until after they had already came in and examined him, or at least the tech had came in and looked at him and then went back. And then while we were sitting there, I was petting him and I was like, what the heck is this? It was a teeny tiny little engorged uh, tick, but it was so small. It was like the size of a freckle. So at um, that time you were kind of like, were you like, ah, whatever, it's a tick? Yeah. I was like, this is, you know, well, I, I had actually experienced before other tick bite paralysis. Um, with other dogs and I was in the vet tech field for a little while. So it wasn't unfamiliar for me. Correct. I just couldn't find one. So it didn't seem as if that was it in the beginning. So once we located that it was this tick, the, it, it should have in theory <laughs> gone away within 24 to 48 hours. Now that it's um, removed. And, and during this period of the tick paralysis, he was still trying to be active and he actually injured his spine. Oh. So it was kind of a compilation thing at this point. A double, yeah. And um, 
it was it was so bad that they were you know saying he had to be hospitalized and he wasn't even like stabilized he was running a fever he was dehydrated um and just was like almost having like a reaction at this point um like his body was just turning red and hot and so they told me i needed to leave him there and when i left him there he got worse and ideally it would have gotten better um and so i was like you know what this is crazy you know because they were talking about wanting to put him down i was like that's insane no way like let me come in and let me see him and uh sure enough as soon as i got there because they they said he wasn't raising his head he wouldn't move his front feet now because it started with just his rear and once i got in there and he heard my voice he perked right up and you know that was a huge sign for everybody they were like okay you know what instead of hospitalizing here take him home we'll send you with the stuff especially because of my prior vet tech experience mm -hmm. and so he came home and just started to get better and um so at that point were you like oh, i don't because you already had planned to be on america's top dog so at that point were you like man now i don't know if he'll be ready in time essentially yeah i actually i told them i was like i don't think he's going to be able to be on the show um i said thank you for the opportunity but his health isn't where it needs to be. And I didn't, I didn't know that it, it was going to happen. I said, I'll yeah. just have to keep in touch and, you know, keep you posted. And they were like, yes, please do. And everybody's super wonderful over at a &E. Um, I mean, everybody reached out, everybody seemed super concerned and, you know, everybody was really rooting for him. Um, and obviously me, my kids, you know, the whole family, we were, we were doing everything we can. So um, obviously that, 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 and the love that he has mm -hmm. is, you know, I think a big testament to why he, you know, fights for us. So, yeah, he's, I mean, I think no one, you knew he was a fighter then, and now everyone <laughs> has seen that he's a fighter. I think before uh, you started your run, Kirk turned to me and he said, Man, Nick, this is a small dog. Like, you know, can this dog really compete with police dogs? And my exact quote, it's actually in the show, is I'm like, Where this dog lacks in size he makes up for an intensity because, uh, you know, for those that don't know, um, I was very familiar with Amanda and Minion, you know, the dog world's small. We have a lot of friends in common, Cody talent, people like this. So I was very familiar. So I knew if you were showing up on this show that no matter what dog you were, we were repping hard. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew that. I really did. And that's what, what I said to Kurt. I said, I know this trainer. And if she brings a chihuahua to compete, I'm going to take them serious. So, right. Well, I um, appreciate that. that. Thank you. So so I knew. I was like, I don't care that he's small. If they're showing up at this stage, you better watch this performance. They may I, not win, but I it's going to really be a performance. I was surprised by the amount of confidence a lot of my friends, you know, and people out there had. Because, again, it's a small community. And so working dog people go, Pfft. Let's be real, you know. Yeah. <laughs> these shepherds, these Malawas, they they got it. They got it yeah. in the bag, and so uh, I was surprised to see how many people had that much confidence. That really is, you know, that yeah, means I, the world to me. I, I I can't, you know, I can't show my appreciation anymore. Thank you guys. Yeah, I, yeah, I, and I think it's like you said. Anyone that knows you knows that you're not going to show up to put on a bad performance. So. <laughs> Um, so I told Kurt, I'm like, don't worry, watch this team. Um, so uh, yeah, everyone's comment below how amazing you guys were. Megan O'Leavy just pinned her comment. She said, you go, girl. Um, My another awesome. Show, I don't even watch TV, guys, but this show, I've, I've been to every <laughs> single one. So now we're going to get started on the run itself. So the K9 Combine, you guys, the K9 Combine, you guys are on the platform. You're waiting for your buzzer to go. You hear that buzzer, you take off, Minion and you hit that first police cruiser, and it seems like there was a little bit of confusion. Minion jumped in, but as you were trying to lure him out the window, he jumped back out and ran to your side. You, was that him, like, trying to get back to you and take the path of least resistance? You what know, do you think happened there? honestly, it's like one of those things us all, you know, all of his dog trainers say, like, oh, that's never happened, you know, before. He's never done that. <laughs> practice one time during the practice rounds. Um, we spent majority of our time in other areas, and um, he nailed it. Of course, I was able to help him and guide him because I didn't want him to jump with his back Bruh. and stuff. Um, but, I mean, he 
he did it perfect. He jumped right in. He knew what he was supposed to do, and he just struggled. I guess lack of focus, and I mean, there was the cameras going down, and I mean, yeah. it was just a different environment. Um, so I, I definitely think that played a role, and of course, my adrenaline was going at that point. So, got to take all of that into uh, account. Yeah, and that's what I always talk about is people who watch the show don't get a full grasp of all that's actually going on around you guys. There's, you know, 30 cameramen, there's light men, there's crew, there's staff, there's producer, like outside of what you see on there's TV, live audience there's chaos there, going you know. on. There's live audience yeah. clapping, cheering. So, so, you know, it only was a few second hiccup. He jumped back out, stayed by your side. You did the perfect got thing. got the decoy on. Yeah, yeah, Ruben. <laughs> Um, you did the perfect thing. You pretty much went back to the, the passenger backside, kind of gave a place almost, hand signaled him in. Yeah. He jumped in. And then it was – he jumped right out perfect. Then you yeah. guys got to one of my favorite parts, that the second vehicle, which was the SUV, where Minion jumps in the back, and for like three seconds, you see those little back feet just <laughs> churning, just burning trying to get in that vehicle. Yeah. And, and that was beautiful to see again. Fight fights for every inch. He, sure he gets does. in on his own. Doesn't need an assist. Vehicle thir third and fourth vehicle, no issue. So you're really only small hiccup at all on the car slot. Right away. And I, even at my, uh, my watch party, I was like, oh, gosh, you're making me look so bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's the funny thing is, you know, probably to it's you it felt done. like it was forever, but it was like two seconds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so now the car salon's done. That was his only hiccup. You guys move on to the fire escape. The funny thing is, Kurt asked me at the top of the episode, he said, you know, where do you see this dog not doing well? And I said, the only thing that I can think that he may not do well is the fire escape because he's a really small dog. Those are decent size, you know, Malinois, German yeah, Shepherd size like balls. Bad. Yeah, and I'm like, I, I literally don't know if this dog can even fit those in his mouth to pull it down. But what I love to see is he grabbed the rope. He adapted and grabbed the rope and pulled yeah. that down. Well, I um, is that something you guys them. trained on, or did he just do that naturally? So so I had to ask them if they were going to give me a smaller ball, and they said no, and I was like, <laughs> oh, man. So then I had this Kong toy, so I was just making it where he'd, you know, he'd play with that. And, um, I mean, that was the rope toy we had in the back of our pocket when I ran, but – I mean, when we did it on the practice, like, he's pretty excited about fighting whatever. So I pointed, and he figured it out. And, you know, that, that part was actually a lot of fun for him. And I think it was a quick release and almost, you know, self-gratifying and rewarding for him to, you know, have some, have that moment to, to really bite on something. So I think it was actually one of his better obstacles. Oh, for opinion. sure. I mean, yeah. the, the fire escape. Uh, level one, level two, level yeah. three, no issues whatsoever. Except right? sometimes no. he'd like run into me and like try and cut me off as we were going up the ramp. Yeah. And <laughs> I was a little nervous. I was going to like topple over, but you know, we did it. We made it. <laughs> that through. was his, his excitement uh, to get, yeah, he to was. get on he was up. Super hype. But yeah, so level one, two, three of the fire escape, beautiful, pretty much as flawless as it could have been. Then he crushes. You guys move down to the first wall jump, three foot wall jump. Goes flying over it, looks like a show horse in a ring, looks beautiful. And then you instantly um, grabbed the, the plank for the four-foot wall. Did you just think or know in advance that he couldn't do the four-foot wall? Is that why you went right um, for that without even attempting the jump? Well, I was really nervous about his back. Um, and when we had practiced, we had practiced with the ramp. And I already knew after being, you know, almost high on life after grabbing the balls and running down, you know, I knew I was going to have to take a second to, like, gather him a little bit. Um, and even when I did tell him free, he didn't enter the ramp at a good angle. So he kind of was slipping and with his back and everything already, uh, it didn't help with our time. And then... I wanted to make sure he, when he got up to the top, he waited versus just slam down over and, and make that impact on his shoulders and stuff. Um, so I was working a lot on getting him to just chill out when I got up there and then helping him down. Yeah, and that, um, was, and that was beautiful to see on the five-foot wall. And I actually, during, if you guys rewatch it, I call attention to that. When he gets to the, he crests the five-foot wall, you're like, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're like, minion, wait! And yeah. then he just like chills at the top. 
And I'm like, wow, look at the teamwork from these two. Yeah. Like, that was impressive to see that much, like, instant control. And he just waits until you get around. And then you guys pretty much do the hop down together. Um, so, obviously, since you were using it on the four-foot wall, I knew that, obviously, you were going to use it on the five-foot wall. And that drill clearly worked out. He waited beautifully, just as you told him to do. And then you guys moved across Rope Bridge. I remember my amazing co-host, Kurt Menefee, as you guys were approaching, he said, can this dog even do the rope bridge? The gaps are maybe wider than Minion is. Um, did you have any uh, fear of the rope bridge at all, or did you know he would crush it? Um, I personally had fear of the rope bridge um, because I was afraid that if I had jumped down, I was going to draw him to me, and he would mm. jump down as well. Which is a big, a big yeah, jump at that and, point. And I knew if I tried to go in front of him, I was going to slow him down. So I, when we practiced, um, I tried it both ways with me behind him and then me beside him. It took just so long for me to get down there and make him wait. So I just went with it. And, you know, actually, we didn't even practice it this way. I just chose to change it last minute, which is <laughs> terrible. Um, but I guess but it paid out. off. Um, but I was like, go, 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 go. And he just. <laughs> and so I was like, well, I guess, again, I didn't want to draw him down off of it. Um, so I was like, I guess I'm going across. And I was like booking it behind him, but I didn't want to like mess it up too. Cause Get I didn't it want to slow. Yeah. And so I was like two or three behind him and about halfway, I was like, oh, I almost fell. So I froze. And luckily, he was already there. And they didn't show that, thank God, because that was not graceful. <laughs> um, but we figured it out, and we, we got to the end. And, I mean, I thought, again, he, he killed that, too. It was just, yeah. how are we going to navigate it? Again, in my mind, it was going to go a very different way. <laughs> but we made But it. you adapted in the moment, and that last Sometimes minute call you, you made, do, yeah. it paid off. Um, so, again, it just shows that, you know, you're – what you did to read your dog in the moment worked out. So, yeah, he flew across the road bridge, no issue there. So now you guys are on to splashdown. Uh, had you done a lot of water training with Minion leading up to this prior? I, that was one area I felt really confident about because he loves the water. We go swimming all the time. He goes kayaking with us, and he's a very strong swimmer. Yeah, he, he does a lot of dock diving. Um, so I was like, we got Whatever. Him. The only problem is, is like, in my experience with like dock diving, these Malinois, these shepherds, when they take off, I mean, they're hitting 20, yeah. 30 feet. My little dog, as much ump as he has, he still only makes it maybe 10 to 13 feet. The size of his like, legs are still the size of his legs. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, I was like, well, you know, we'll see what he's got. And I mean, he t took off. No problem. Of course, no hesitation. Um, but and, I was a little nervous of where my throw might be. Sometimes I'm a little <laughs> yanky and I get it off and then I mess him up. Uh, but that time we, we did okay. We, we hit it right in the middle and he yeah, it was a right beautiful. Off. It was a beautiful tug toss yeah. dead center. Uh, and he does a nice launch. Like you guys yeah. watch that video. Stop, he's like, yeah. He's like spread Eagle, you know, and it just soars right into it. Um, so that was beautiful. Again, no issue on splashdown. Minion gets out. You hit the buzzer. You're at two minutes, 44.5 seconds. So did you feel – so when you hit that buzzer, how did you feel about the run? Were you like, man, that was really slow? Man, that was really fat? Like, what was, your, what was going through your head? In my mind, I was like, man, that was super fast. Like, I was booking it, you know? So if I'm booking it, he's booking it. But – I, I had realized, of course, we had made some mistakes, and I, I wasn't underestimating at all the, the people that I was up against. Because um, I've seen their practice. They look good. So yeah. I was like, all right, I'm just going to, you know, just be proud of, of my dog and the fact that we're here, and he he's made it. We, you yeah. know, we made it. So I just took full advantage of that experience and – you know, just wanted to express my gratitude and would, was excited to be able to watch the other competitors next. Because I was a little afraid, like, where I was going to be at. And I wanted to be able to see him, too. So that yeah. was cool. <laughs> where, where was your confidence after your run to know or think, like, all right, we'll definitely advance to round two based off that run? 
Or did um, you just have no idea? I, I really think it was in watching some of the other dogs struggle with the water that I didn't really expect. So I was like, all right, this is, this is our chance. Like we might make this up, but I mean, I felt like we gave it our all. So at that point, you know, I wasn't honestly even thinking too much about where, if we were winning or where we stood, it was more about like just living in the this moment. Is super cool. Like we're living gonna, in the moment. Yeah. You know, I just was trying to take it all in. So it yeah, that's awesome. Awkward. So you guys finished at two minutes, 44.5 seconds, which was the third fastest run of the night. So essentially you did faster than two police dogs. Um, yeah. And now you guys moved in, you advanced to round two, which everyone knows the Boneyard claims many lives, underdog and police dog. Uh, again, to recap for everyone, what makes the Boneyard so difficult? It's a 3,000 square foot maze that's open. So we got wind blowing through. We're in the desert canyons of LA. So a bunch of winds coming through. It's a maze. It's timed, five minutes, extremely difficult. Where was your confidence coming into the Boneyard on, on Minion's detection? I didn't. I didn't have confidence. Uh, <laughs> I knew I was still in the, in the teaching phases. Um, I had planned to get started, you know, sooner, but because of the paralysis, I mean, he was on just a straight rest period. Um, we weren't doing anything and we couldn't. So uh, I didn't have very long to work with him on that. So that was definitely, in my opinion, an area where I, I lacked confidence and I felt the most, um, you know, the most lacking. So, so you felt way more confident going into round one than round two. Uh, I mean, I I was in the whole fake it till you make it for an honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I mean, I, I felt good about it. I'm a competitor. So at the end of the day, like, I like, you know, I like being in challenging situations where it, it pushes me on. to be better. It pushes me to think on the fly and stuff like that. So I think that's really all I was thinking about was like, how are we going to, you know, how are we going to figure this out? Like mission impossible. It's not me against everybody else. It's like me against yeah. my best self. So yeah, it's good. That's um, awesome. Yeah. So, when, when we went into it, I mean, again, I, I knew at the end of the day, we did everything that we could and we were going to give it our all. So that's my mentality walking into the boneyard. I was kind of honestly surprised to be there. <laughs> you're in a competition with yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so before we get into the boneyard, you chose the odor of cinnamon. Can you talk, uh, and I had some people ask me about that. Can you talk to us a little bit about why you chose cinnamon versus like birch or clove or aniseed or? Absolutely. So obviously I couldn't get like explosives or narc, <laughs> but I, um, I was thinking the nose work uh, scents, which are birch, aniseed and clove, but I went to the store and I couldn't find any. <laughs> and I was like, ah, man, like, I'm, I'm already limited. I live in the middle of nowhere, right? Like, where am I going to find this? So um, even sometimes getting things, like, shipped to me is tough because of just where we live. So I was like, bump it. Cinnamon oil is here. I'm going to just get some cinnamon oil. And we're nice, going to call it. Nice, strong scent picture. It is also, it is also a strong scent. I think, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, given the, the fact that we are, were already – huge underdogs and didn't have very much time to teach it like what better thing than you know yeah. something nice and spanky you know <laughs> so so yeah so that, it was almost by chance that you did it with cinnamon that's it lack of availability for other pretty much scents. it was accessibility yeah so okay well that answers everyone's question uh, so now you guys enter the boneyard you hit the bathroom yeah. and the what's fun
um, in the areas. It didn't Slots. show it. Again, thank goodness for editing. But Minion had jumped up on the chair and was like right in the camera's face. And I was like, ah, oh, he's thinking about <laughs> stuff like, let's get out of here. But I didn't want to, again, I didn't want to call him away and, you know, without him thinking to, to search that area. And I think that was a big reason why I was quick to get out of that room. Yeah. Um, and that was when he was on the desk. Yeah, so you're you're so you you do the bathroom, you find that the toothbrush in a minute, yeah. you move on to the living room. Yeah. Yeah. Where he jumps up on the desk, um, and he's right in the area. I mean, minions uh, around where the book and the the holder is, and yeah. the actual odor is on the speaker, which is like three feet away. And you, so you knew he was onto something because you called the book, right? Yeah. But and that, so and you knew he was on I something. I the wrong thing and each time I was hitting that lever he was starting to get a little more like apprehensive about coming to me and what he was doing he started to get a little over yeah and even again with my anxiety and everything going like he was just getting more overwhelmed so when we got back in that room I just, you know, I didn't really know what to do. So I was just like, let's just get out of here. And, and so we left that room. Yeah. And that was actually um, during, you know, we commentate for seven hours and it's condensed to 42 minutes. But that was one thing during the live run I actually said to Kerr. And I said, I love her decision to decide to quickly move on. Some people we see in our show and just in the world of dog training, they commit too long to the same mistake, as I like to say, is yeah. they'll spend two minutes in that room. You tried one, you gave them another shot. 10 seconds, he, he had nothing yet. And you're like, all right, let's move on and try our somewhere else. And that one decision alone could have made the difference between advancing to round three or not. So mm -hmm. again, beautiful read and in that stressful moment too, which is what makes it even more impressive. So you, you decided to make the, the executive decision to leave the living room. Um, and then you go in uh, to the storage room. Storage, yeah. Yeah, so, and again, you tell them to one, one before I move on to that really quick, just for my curiosity and some others. I noticed you went on, you went into the boneyard with a very free, independent search, where we see a lot of the handlers do more of a detailed search. What was? Did you have a strategy for that, or was that just an in the moment decision? Um, no. When I was shaping those behaviors, again, I kind of already know my dog's work ethic, and I know how he, you know, enters a room, and you know, just kind of how he some dogs take to the air to the, you know, the ground or whatever. Um, I, I know that he's very task oriented. So once I give him a task, he's usually spot on. Um, and it's a big game to him. So he knows the faster he gets there, the, the better his, you know, reward is, um, and the faster he can move on. So that's essentially what that is. Um, and I mean, I, I don't, I, I don't know. I, so, so did, did, did you, if he was starting to get hung up, did you have any plan at any point to like try a detailed search or were you just going to let him do his thing? I would have, but again, just where we were at in the training phases, like we weren't even there yet. I wasn't, <laughs> you know, I, I was just, cause I liked, I already liked that he's very open anyways. He, meaning like he'll jump anywhere. He'll check any little corner. He'll do those things kind of on his own. So I don't have to do as much to help him through those situations. And it's not like he's super ramped up. He's usually quite methodical and he's, you know, he's usually. So he's a very good independent searcher. Yeah. Yeah. He's pretty, he works well by himself. He yeah. And he, guys. and he showed that. So, so you move into the storage room. Um, I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff in our storage room, three shelves, a bunch of different items and he's sniffing, sniffing and throws in my opinion, one of his best ones of the night in the boneyard throws a great change of behavior and even a final response on the tubes. He drop, jumps up, sniffs, spins around, sits down, faces you, looks up at you. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you know, you immediately call that, yeah. rightfully so. Um, and that pretty much that gave you guys enough to win because the teams before you, Murphy and Blitz, also found three items, but it took them nearly five minutes to do it. And you now had found your third item in just under three minutes. So by default, that instantly advanced you guys to round three, and you didn't even have to continue. Probably, I'm sure you weren't disappointed, uh, searching for the fourth and fifth item. So 
when you found out like, wow, we advanced based off this, were you pretty, were you shocked? Were you surprised or were I you was like? Absolutely shocked. I did not <laughs> expect, I, again, I went into it knowing that that was our weakest area and I just knew we gave it our all and I did my best and I know he's going to give me 110%. So I just, I felt shocked and obviously like we, he did so well, he exceeded my expectations. <laughs> it just, it blew me away. So I was, I was just so happy. <laughs> yeah. He, I mean, he, he did amazing in the boneyard as well. Great. I mean, everyone loved him like jumping up on the desks and, you know, you know, again, where he lacks in size, he makes for it up in other ways. I may not be tall enough to sniff, so I'll just jump up on the desk and sniff around. So, again, yeah. it was great even him adapting in the moment just like you did. Um, so now you you pretty much beat the first two police dogs by two minutes, which is very substantial. So amazing run by you and Minion. Now you find out you're going to round three, the doghouse. Going into the doghouse, what did you foresee as being your biggest obstacle in the doghouse? That huge wall. The um, knockdown wall. That wall, man. That 135-pound that... wall, 28-pound dog. I get where you would be a little nervous. I went in <laughs> practice. That was one of the other areas where I spent majority of my time. Um, that and, and the walls. Um, but, yeah, he in practice hit it like three times and the thing didn't budge and i was like man <laughs> like i don't know what we're gonna do and i was also concerned because with that heavy weight it goes bam, hard and if he hard. got under it or something or yeah and i was also worried like what if that frightens him you know uh, now it creates it, an you know and the variable of it falling under him you know all, just a lot of things and i was like i don't know how this is gonna be so um so you were concerned maybe that big loud bang would almost create an aversion now yes, and now he doesn't want to go near exactly it. so i i you know i didn't know there was a lot of different possibilities um it just wasn't something that we had the opportunity to try and simulate in training so what do you do you know um <laughs> well what you guys did for those that missed it, is completely crush it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so were you shocked he, he when knew he... A, he knew a trick called rebound. And so that was enough to get his force to push off of it, kind of like parkour. And uh, it knocked it down, and he wasn't worried, and we were we were. So moving. at that moment, were you pretty excited when he... Uh, was... When the thing you feared most, he crushed instantly? Yeah, I was. And then I was like, all right, now don't fall. And I was like, <laughs> take it off. And so, so now they hit the knockdown beautifully. They jump through the window. No issue. Minion already proved in round one. He has no issue jumping. Uh, and here's where you an advantage for you guys come in. Pretty much everything in our course that's designed is kind of a disadvantage for Minion. It's three, four foot, five foot walls, jumping, items placed high. But now finally in round three, you guys get a break. And yeah. you get an advantage for you, yeah. for those that don't know. Am Amanda's no, you know, six foot three woman either. So, I'm 4'11". Uh, so, so here your first advantage ever comes in, which is a spider web, uh, where a lot of dogs and handlers get hung up, where I think Minion just walked under all of them. So. Yeah, no problem. And then the low crawl. <laughs> And then, and then you move on. To crawl. And me, yeah, I'm then like, you move on to the low crawl where I'm a spider. Yeah, where Minion, it wasn't a low crawl. He just ran at normal height under it. Yeah. Um, and then Amanda had to squat down a little bit to get under it. And then you guys had a little bit of an issue. Uh, so far, flawless run up to this point. You get to boxes up. Talk to us about that. So in practice, he had no problem. But in in the actual run, he was, whatever reason, pulling left. It was like he was trying to see what was off yeah. in the distance. Again, there was cameras, there were people, you know, there's a lot going on. So I don't know what the deal was, but he was trying to go <laughs> that way. And I was like, please don't kill yourself. Like, let's let's go. And so I grabbed his harness and was trying to guide him back, back you know, the, the smart Right on the path. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and then, yeah, and then he took right to it. He was. He just needed to get his head back in the game. So that was a quick refocus. 
Yeah, because a lot of people don't realize when that box is up, like if they're halfway, three quarters of the way up, it's on the sides. It's I mean, it's a drop off, right? And and there's holes in between. So mm. they could, you know, get a foot or, you know, I could get a foot or something caught. And sometimes he had to like go across it. Yeah. So, so he had a little same, things. probably seemed like forever for you during the run. But realistically, it was a couple seconds lost. But as we've learned, a couple seconds can be the difference in everything. Yeah. So you get through the boxes up, you work him through it. Uh, he jumps up on the box, blasts through the ductwork, no issue whatsoever. Um, again, for him, he's at a full stand and running through. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's so excited about that. He loved that one. That, that was no problem for him. Yeah, so he does amazing through there. And I had, for me, as I'm watching, I had no concerns on door breach because he already showed me how amazing on the fire escape he was at grabbing the ropes to yank. So he gets to the first door breach. What what was the command what, that you I just for say, that? get it. Get it, that's right. There you go. Get it. You point, say, get it, and Minion gets it. So he grabs it, flings the door open, goes to the second door breach, flings the door open. Now you're dropping down. Boom, boom, boom. Our amazing decoy, Ruben, uh, who was in here earlier, still may be in. He's, uh, he's waiting behind the wall, waiting for you guys to finish. Before we get to that exciting, dirty moment in Minion history, where was your you I knew that you know Minion will bite. Uh, he's done it a lot. Did you feel confident on his verbal out? I felt good about his out. Um at first I wanted to make sure he was going the right direction because he will bite wh whoever's in the way if he thinks that that's who I mean to bite. So I just wanted to because there was live people there and <laughs> you know a cast and all that. He was I focused on sure the right person. Too. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to make sure he knew where to go, and so I went with him a little bit. And then once he was there, I booked it the, to the to the platform. But I didn't one know if he knew which direction I had went, and two, mm -hmm. I got nervous and said, "Minion, come," versus "Outcome," which is what I would usually say. So he popped off and he looked at me, and then he took that rebite. And I think that was more out of confusion because he didn't hear out and so then I was like out come and he came and so so for those that missed it one of my favorite bites of all of America's top dog Ruben our amazing decoy I just pinned him below give him a follow if you guys are in uh, Can he I pops take out Amanda sends minion Ruben gives a nice wide spread great targeting great funneling for minion minion comes Gives a nice full mouth bite on Ruben's groin. <laughs> uh, it, actually cuts, <laughs> it actually cuts to me in the picture in picture talking to Kurt. And I'm like, I don't know about you, Kurt, but I would give up right now. I would definitely give up. Um, so you say out to him. Or you say, what you say you say to him at this moment? So I say minion come. Oh, so you don't give him the out. No. So he's like, he lets go and he's like, Wait a minute. Maybe I misunderstood. So then, wow. It, I got nervous, and there was a lot going on. And So then he rechecks Ruben in the same spot. Nice, full-mouth grip. Uh, Ruben, I'm sure you – hopefully a couple good shakes in there. Yeah. <laughs> it was a, a beautiful bite for the second time. Unwanted <laughs> and unwarranted, but beautiful nonetheless. We call that a dirty bite for those that don't know. Um, and now at this point, do you tell him out or do you just say, come yeah, so I say, I say out, come. Okay. So now you say out, he lets go. And but to back up, one of my favorite parts in this whole thing is Minion, when he outs the first time, he looks at you, takes like one step and then it's like, nah, yeah. boom. And then, and you see, he's Ruben. like, I didn't hear that out. Boom. That was my chance. <laughs> And you see Ruben, our decoy here, he like, but like kind of checks forward because he didn't expect it. <laughs> He's like, oh, I didn't expect that. And then you give him the out, Minion comes running back, finishes with a great time of one minute, 31.8 seconds. How did you feel about that run when he comes back? Did you feel like it was great? Did you feel like it was slow? Um, I felt like that was our stronger course um so i felt pretty good about it i just knew with that rebite and that lapse of time i mean i know how 
serious that can be in a timed event like that. So I uh, I didn't really know. I was just hoping for the best. So, yeah, it was, it was a beautiful run. I mean, the only real hiccups you had was boxes up a couple seconds, maybe one or two seconds on re-grabbing uh, Ruben's groin on that second, <laughs> that second bite. So, realistically, a few seconds possibly lost if you would have – would not have had those issues. Yeah. So now you're you're watching uh, the the second team go, right? You're getting to watch them go. Mm -hmm. I'm right, sitting. So. I'm sitting down, and they tell me at the they tell me before it even starts if it when he ends it turns this color you won. If it turns this color you lost. And I was just like, it is what it is. Again, I'm in the full experience. My dog is ah! going crazy. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I'm just cheering him on, too. I'm like, let's go, let's go. And, um, yeah, I went, you know, when it was all said and done, like, I didn't know. I, I mean, I thought they did excellent. So were, were you able to see as they're running uh, round three, you're not able to see their time as they're running, are you? No, no. I just So you really have no idea. Them. Yeah, no, I, you don't have any idea as you're running it. They don't show or Share so that as, as he's running, you in your mind, are you like, man, I feel like he's going faster than I was. He's going slower than I was. Like, what were what oh, was you he, thinking? They booked it up the, the boxes. I mean, yeah. I, I felt like they did that way faster. I felt like we did a lot better through the uh, through the um, uh, the web and the, the spider web, duck work. Yeah, the low yeah. crawl. I felt like we did okay through there. Um, but I mean, he, his dog was really fast, you know, through the duck work, through the doors, and then again to the bite. So, um, I was just excited for them. They were doing well. Yeah. Um, and honestly, it, again, editing, I actually sat there for a good couple seconds, like, just like, yeah, good job. Ooh, as he's coming off and they're like, no, you won. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, I was so taken back, and then you're like, "What? What happened?" Yeah, and then I just <laughs> screamed, and Minion was just screaming too. <laughs> and and for those that that did not see, or most of you probably saw, um, who's watching this, is really the difference was kind of the verbal out almost. Is you literally uh, won? For those, if you go back and play it. The difference between winning and losing was 1.1 second. Literally, that was you, you won round three by 1.1 second, which I mean, and, and his dog had a little bit of a more of an issue on the verbal out than Minion did. So in my opinion, that verbal out literally made the difference. Or if Minion, you know, gave Ruben a third bite, <laughs> that could have made the difference. <laughs> Uh, I, so, I believe it wasn't a, a, an issue of defiance because I own those dogs too. Um, I believe it was purely, again, just madness of the moment and me messing up and him checking back like, was that right? And in that moment of confusion, he was like, taking it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and hey, I don't, I don't blame him. You know, Ruben's there. You know, it why was not? There. So, yeah, so, uh, yeah, like I said, it was my favorite moment of probably the entire episode is that, that rebite. Uh, um, so, yeah, that, it was beautiful. So now we, you guys won. You're America's Top Dog, episode three. If you could have done anything differently, knowing what you know now, would you have? What would you have done differently? Um, would you have not changed anything? You would just run it the exact same way? No, I definitely, uh, I think I would slow down a little bit at the at the cars. I would have made sure he entered the ramps a little bit better, um, you know, for both safety and efficiency for the, you know, for the jumps. But, I mean, everything else, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty what about happy as well as with, it could. with it. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was pretty good, you know, with, with everything. It just, everybody goes, ah, oh, you know, I would do this or I would do that. Um, you never really know. And all it shows for me is that when we're training, I guess, you know, we got to really up the ante in terms of the element of uh, think on the fly. And pressure. The pressure and the adrenaline, and, yeah. you know, you got to simulate that as much as possible. And I've even seen, you know, when we're working with the police guys and, the, you know, all of our patrolmen, um, 
sometimes they're not training with that same real emotion and yeah. adrenaline that they're going to have in real life. And I see the dogs react very different oh, in those sure. environments. So it just reminds me again how I got to add that even to, you know, my pet dog, obviously. Cause it may, Realistic training. Yeah, it may come in handy. So Some stress, some pressure, some excitement going on. Exactly. Uh, because as you said, it changes not only the way the dog behaves, but just as importantly, the, the decisions and how the handler behaves. Exactly. So, um, so we have about five. Uh, we cut out. Ask any questions below. Uh, you, are we back? So, oh, yeah. So now if you guys want to ask, now if you guys want to ask any questions below for myself, for Amanda, about Minion, anything, take the opportunity to comment below or just make a comment. I, I feel like I question. saw somebody on here. I, I, think, I think I saw my, my buddy Scoot from the episode. Scoot crushed it. Hey, I'm not Amber. Scoot, I'm Amanda. <laughs> okay, uh, hold on. Please talk about how much trash talk Minion did when Scoot and I stepped onto the plane with you guys. <laughs> 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 yeah, Minion doesn't like uh, – other dogs in his space so he'll growl if if especially if they're male i, I can attest to that i actually to after him. i actually saw minion step to canine mattis uh over i think it was a ball or he's something crazy. He's local. i mean to put i mean canine mattis like 100 pounds and minions like 28 but he was like yeah. nah I'm standing my ground. It's, it's the big little dog syndrome, you know. They eyeball <laughs> him, and they're like, hey, you want a piece of meat? That's but true. He still did good. He just vocalizes a little. Uh, someone asked, can we see little Minion? Is he around? Uh, he is actually not in the room at the moment. I actually am playing right now with his, uh, second, with his cousin. second cousin. Oh, so. Is he like... Is he America's Top Dog, like, season five ready, or? She is hopefully Jeez. to have uh, minion babies in the long future. And, yes, we're going to be doing all sorts of amazing, fun things with her. She actually just started her little Facebook page. Not Facebook, nice. Instagram. And, um, yeah, I, I love her already. She's how old is she? She's adorable. She's from the same breeder as Minion. Uh, how old is she? Ten weeks. Ten weeks. She just oh, got her today. Nice. Oh, she's adorable. So yeah. look out for her, America's Top Dog, season five. <laughs> yeah. She'll be ready then. <laughs> so ha has America's Top Dog course at all, like, made you kind of think about adding stuff to your training or, like, yeah? Absolutely. Um, it's actually, I guess, opened some avenues uh, for the civilian type of scent detection type of programs, like nose work. Yep. Um, I've had a lot of people reach out to me, I guess, you know, it's not something that we generally do. So I never really thought like there would be much of an interest, but apparently there is. And so that's pretty cool. Um, I'm excited to, you know, do more of that, um, and, you know, help people get involved with their pets. Um, I definitely think again, adding the elements of, you know, adrenaline and excitement and other outward, uh, environmental and you know social stimulus into our training programs um i think is going to be beneficial um but that's that's really it I, I love what we do already and you know i uh i i've always taken a big emphasis on like canine conditioning and making sure mm -hmm. that you know they're in really good shape and good athletes so yeah, Sorry. if you guys don't already follow Amanda on Instagram, uh, we have a <laughs> and you can see a lot of her doing like slap mill work and just a bunch of, as she said, a bunch of training and conditioning work with dogs. And you'll see some of the things she does that took to help create America's Top Dog. <laughs> Plug. Uh, so Amanda, as you know, we have an amazing episode four lined up with a bunch of trainers, handlers, and dogs that you and I both know. Um, without playing favorites, without being biased at all, being oh. pure, we're just having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Who <laughs> do you think is winning and why? Oh, man. And it's so, so, so hard to say and choose because I love so many of the teams. Um, you think our underdogs stand a chance next episode? Of course, I'm like episode. underdogs, right? <laughs> but here's the thing. Like, I knew Mattis, uh, Mark Tappan and Mattis mm -hmm. that are coming on. I knew them before the show, and once I found out, like, 
they were there. And when I see him, I'm like, I respect the man a lot. I know the type of work that he invests in his dog. Yeah. He goes above and beyond what the normal, you know, police officer and canine handler that I usually would meet does. So, like I said, I got a lot of admiration and respect for him. And uh, I got to say, I just know what kind of team they are. And that's a really tough one to beat. So, I'm going to have to go with Mattis and, and Mark. Do you think the underdogs? I hate, you, I hate it. Do <laughs> you, you think the underdogs stand a chance? Again? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to toot Mattis up that big. But, <laughs> you know, I think, um, like I said, I just got so much respect for the team. Um, I love, you know, uh, I, I love the other teams as well. I love the underdogs. I know Wolverine is, is going to smash it, too. I'm very interested to see how the boxer does. Um, I met them briefly, but I didn't get a chance to, like, really hang out with them. I don't train with them. So being that I've trained with Mark and Mattis, and I know how thorough they Yeah, firsthand are, experience with them. Yeah, you just – you got to respect that, you know. So I think that that's, that's what I'm going to have to go with. Sorry, I know. Right. <laughs> uh, someone asked – is there a breed restriction on underdogs? Um, so for America's Top Dog, if you're an underdog, you just can't be a stereotypical police dog, even if you're not a handler. So it has to be an, an off-typical breed, meaning you can't be an underdog with a German Shepherd, a Malinois, a Dutch Shepherd, because then it kind of defeats the purpose of yeah, being Yeah, because I underdog. wanted to go on there with a herder at first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Kathy Fleming says, I'm pulling for Mattis as well. Big Dave says, season two, Atlanta. Make it happen, Nick. Look, we're really trying for a season two. We got about three minutes left because I've learned Instagram actually cuts us off at the one hour mark. Uh, I've learned that. So I try to just do it before they do it for me. But we're really pulling for a season two, guys. Uh, obviously, it, it sounds very cliche, but it's just true. The biggest thing that you guys can do is you're in charge of whether we get a season two or not. Not myself, not Amanda, not Mattis. Good it's man. viewership. So we need you guys watching it, DVRing it, tweeting about it, hashtagging America's Top Dog on Instagram. Those are literally the things the network solely judges whether we get a season two. So we want one. So if you guys do do as well, yes, watch do it, it, about it, tweet about it, um, share it on your stories, and those are the things that will help assure us getting a season two. Uh, could have laughed. Hashtag Team Minion. Hashtag Team Minion. Uh, New Flab Lover says, what about a lab? Yes, a lab could be an underdog indeed. Uh, could be a Bouvier. It could be a Doberman. It could yep. be a Rottweiler. It could be a band dog. <laughs> yeah. Um, it could be a pit. Well, obviously, there's lots of you yep. know, pit types and bull breeds. Um, hell, get on there with a Corgi. There you go. Uh, I More Quarter Collies. Minions set the standard to show that small dogs can do big things. So it can be a corgi, it, it, you know, it can be anything really. Um, Husky Pups Unleashed says she's currently are currently training their dog to be an a future America's Top Dog Siberian awesome. Husky. That would be amazing. I would love that to see a Husky. That would be impressive. You yeah. do that. I need to come to you for strength. <laughs> that would be indeed uh, impressive, indeed. Uh, New Finland. Uh, cattle dog, yeah, I would love to see a cattle dog on there. Ah, I trained that dog. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, I would really like to see it on there then. Uh, how long has this uh, been on for? So only three episodes. Amanda was our third episode, and then our next episode, which is episode four, is going to be this Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And for those of you that have missed the first few, the link is in my bio. Um, just click Watch America's Top Dog, and you can watch the first three episodes. Uh, anything else? We have about one minute left. Anything you want to talk about or plug Amanda? What, I know you have something coming up, like a decoy workshop or something, right? Uh, no, we're actually just having a training day. It's essentially anybody who's actively competing um, or has a direction or goal to compete in either Schutzen or slash IGP, uh, French ring, Mondio ring, PSA, APPDA, um, or even active patrol, uh, dual purpose police officers, they're welcome as well. We're just not working with anybody that's just getting involved because we want to make sure they already have a direction set so they get the most out of it. But we're going to be right. in Georgia for that. Perfect. So if you ever want to work with Amanda before we get cut off, go to Patriot Canine on her Instagram. 
or you can DM me, DM her. And we look forward to our next episode this Wednesday, 9 p.m. And thank you for joining us, Amanda. Everyone loved you guys, including myself. Hashtag Team Minion. Hashtag Team Minion. All right. <laughs> All Later, right, guys. Take care, y'all.